Welcome back to all our families, to all our kids, to everyone, to new friends, new faces. Hi, nice to see you again. And I think I see a couple of people I, I, I've seen before too. Welcome back guys, nice seeing you again. My name is Isaiah and I'm one of the three brothers just really taking care of this idea of my friend, Jesus. This wonderful series where we've been taking Jesus's character and just making it very real and personable to all our kids in 2021. It's been fantastic and <laughs> we've gone through so many different characteristics and last week was Easter and it was a phenomenal lesson all about generosity and it told the story of not only trees, you know, you see I'm in, in this wonderful nature. I was just inspired by Patrick and you know, how to, how to come outside and really get my nature seen in. But also, it talked about the idea of the ultimate act of generosity being the sacrifice that Jesus made for us all. It was just such a touching story that I really wanted to just continue with that idea. Today we're going to be talking about the enthusiasm of Jesus. The the boldness, the charisma, the, the just fire, the fire that Jesus had in his life. Now, we're going to switch things up today. You know, normally we start off with, you know, the illustrations and then we dive into, you know, the actual thing that Jesus would have done. But today we're going to start off with the thing Jesus did. Because I think it's going to really help <laughs> you guys to picture it. Because we have this video that a couple people made of, of what it might have been like to have been around Jesus when he was a kid. When he was you guys' age. Could you imagine if Jesus was in your class? I just want you guys to really be able to picture like, oh man, what would it have been like if Jesus was actually my friend right now? Like if he was the same age I was. And hopefully this video helps to make it present. So with that, here's that video. Look at me, Jesus bar Joseph. Why did the Phoenicians cut the hair of Samson? Forgive me, Rabbi, but it was not the Phoenicians. It was the Philistines, and they cut his hair to make him weak. Where is Elisha, who was taken up in the chariot? It was Elisha who was taken up. Elisha is with the Lord. Who resides in the Garden of Eden? No one. There's no one in Eden. There is no one in Eden writing this and all the deeds of the world down? Men say it is Enoch, but Eden is empty until the Lord says all the world will be Eden again. Why did the Lord break his covenant with King David? The Lord does not break his covenants. The throne is there. Where is the king? He will come and his house will last forever. Will, will a carpenter build it? <laughs> yes. There's always a carpenter. Even the Lord himself is a carpenter sometimes. How is the Lord a carpenter? Tell me. Didn't the Lord himself tell Noah how to build the ark? What kind of wood to use? And how it should be pitched? And wasn't it the Lord who granted the vision of the new temple to Prophet Ezekiel with the dimensions of the galleries? The gates, the altar. Yes, it was. And when the Lord made the world, wasn't wisdom there like a master craftsman? If wisdom is not the Lord, what is wisdom? And when Cyrus the Persian decreed that we could return to our holy land, the carpenters came home to build the temple, as the Lord said it should be built. And <laughs> This is a good child. I like this child. <laughs> School. Tomorrow morning.
I don't know about you guys, but that's so cool. Like when I think about a, a, a young guy having just that much fun, just that much passion and that much knowledge, you just, you kind of look at him and you're like, wow, this guy's, he's special. I mean, do you guys have anyone like that in your life that you just look at them and you're just like, wow, they just know so much about this. They, they're so passionate about it. It, it. They're so enthusiastic about it. Yeah? I mean, I, I know just, it, it's really cool. Even Seth, you guys know Seth. That's, that's one of my best friends right there. And he's just so passionate about technology. Like just the other day, he got this new computer. He has this new light. And I just have to hear about it all the time. He's like, Isaiah, I got this new technology. Really, like, look at it. It's so cool. And you just sit there and you listen to this person just talk about all the details. And they're just, they're so knowledgeable about it because they care so much. And I just, it just really makes me excited. Like, I don't naturally care about technology. But when Seth is like hyping up cameras and stuff like that, even today I'm filming on a new camera. I'm like, man, Seth is just out here doing all these things. I guess maybe I should get my act together. <laughs> maybe I should invest into like some new equipment too. I mean, you guys saw his new mic. So it's just really fun. Um, and when you see someone else's passion, it just fires you up too. And that's the thing about Jesus. Like from a very early age, he had a passion for scripture. He has a passion for for just the word and, and, and the faith. That was his passion. He cared a lot about it from, from this side. You know, when he was literally, if he was in you guys' classes right now, he would be the type of friend that would be like, hey, hey, do you want to talk about the Bible right now? Like, hey, maybe we should go share our faith with that guy. Like he would just be so fired up about his faith because that was his passion. And that's so cool to think about. Now, I know that may be a little unrelatable though. Like maybe you're like, Isaiah, I don't think I've ever had like the type of fire that he did about faith for myself. And you know, that's understandable. It takes a lot of time for a lot of people to really understand scriptures and, and really be fired up about it. Even for my own story, I didn't come into the church until I was 21. It took me a long time. I went through all of college and I, I just didn't, I wasn't around church people. And then I finally got it at some point, you know, it finally came back to me. Just, you know, it had always been around. My mom had always told me about it, but I just never really listened. <laughs> you know, I, I just went off and I did so many other things. So something I wanted to show you guys, just to encourage you and show like, there's so many different ways to really just work with God and, and, and allow him to be your friend. And I think this animation is going to help a lot with that. So with that, here is one small step. I hope you guys enjoy. Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour.
Wow, what a powerful animation. How many of you guys have had a passion before and you were just fired up about it when you were young? And the older you get, it's like, it, it gets harder and harder to just, just have fun with it. The first shot that caught my eye is just, it's just a photo frame. It's just the kid and the parent. And they both have on this astronaut gear because that was the passion that the kid had. That was the passion that the father was able to see from a very early age. And he's just, he was such a supportive father. He's just like, wow, I, I see this passion you have. Let me give to you. Let me just really make sure you're having so much fun with this. And she, he was her best friend when it came to that. Later, we see the image of her just like in a rocket ship, just having the most fun in the world. You know, just no care. Just completely excited and happy and just having a good time. It's really powerful. The dad is in the back, you know, like he seems concerned the whole time, but he's just there to be supportive. And it's just such a cool scene. And we transition to this really cool shot with just the father and the daughter, and they're just in the stars. They're just floating and just so happy. It's just such a cool scene. And guys, I want you to remember your first passion. Like if it was sports, that's awesome. If it was drawing or art, that's awesome as well. Maybe it's dance. There's so many different things it could be. It could be math. And you were just having so much fun. It was just like when you do it, you're just floating, playing video games, watching TV with friends. There's just a moment when everything just seems right. This is very similar to our walk with God. You know, when we're first introduced to him and we first see him, when we were kids, we were singing all the songs super loudly, you know? The songs weren't corny. <laughs> they weren't they weren't like, oh man, here we go, the same song over. They were fresh and new. You were a kid. Things were simple. You weren't aware of so much. It was just such a simple time. You could just have fun. Don't you remember that time? Think back to our camp. Think back to being just in the the church and just going to classes and just being around the other kids wasn't it just so simple <laughs> maybe you didn't always have fun or maybe you never really liked worship song but there was something there that was just so simple and just so fun and that's sort of what the beginning of the video is like you know it's just this moment when you're first introduced to faith that everything just seems really powerful it just seems so powerful and it's so awesome but then there's a transition. We start to see things fall apart. Like the, the very first shot was when she was walking and her sandal broke. And you just see her slowly start to go through all these things that just, it really discourages her. And the father is there the whole time. He, he's supportive and he sees her go through all this, but you know, she's going through the hard grades she's messing up with track and falling and she just comes home and she's frustrated she's so frustrated she's failing and, and just having a hard time the father's trying to be encouraging but it's just super hard have you ever been there have you ever messed up and you know maybe you missed the shot when it's this your big moment in a game or maybe you had a big test coming up and you just you thought you were going to do well you studied all night and you just didn't do well and then you're like am i not smart and you just had so much passion for school or you had so much passion for your sport or whatever it was and you were just so encouraged and fired up and then something bad happens and you're just like i don't want to do this anymore <sighs> i'm not good at this it's hard and you, you start to lose your fire have you been there well i think it's so relatable and the thing is, that's exactly how our faith is sometimes when it's just like you do good things, you do good things, but then something goes wrong and it just gets really hard to connect with that, that fire you had when you were young to sing the songs as loudly, to stand up when there's worship songs or, or to really participate. It just gets hard. Even though the father is there trying to be supportive, you know, you see him trying to hand fruit to her and she's running out the door. It just gets hard and we start to focus on all these other things like we get frustrated so we take it on all ourselves we forget about the people who want to help us and we just do it all ourselves because we don't want help anymore we're, we're too old for that i don't want help anymore i don't need my parents help i got this and then you just start doing things your own way until one day you come home and you realize something tragic happened 
you know, and it, it could just be a wake up call from any nature. And I don't know what it was for you, but there's just this moment when you realize it's just like, wow, I have been so involved with this other stuff. I forgot about something really important. And that's so similar to what it was like for our faith. Like, even when Jesus died, it, it was like he was there the whole time. He's been here the whole time for you, too. Like, he was here the whole time. And people didn't recognize it. And, and they didn't accept him while he was here. So he went away. As we learned last week, he went away. And then there's just this moment when it starts, you, you start to realize, it's like, wait a minute. I just lost something really important. Something really important was just sacrificed so I could be here. And then your faith is just re-energized again. And then it's so beautiful at the end just to see everything come back together. And it's just so powerful. Guys, that's really what I want to leave you with. When you're out here and you're really trying to tackle your faith, and I know it's difficult, there's going to be periods of time where maybe it feels just like it did in the animation. It's going to feel like things are frustrating and maybe you feel like, I don't have any passion. You know, I don't have any dreams. I don't have anything to be fired up about. Like, I'm not fired up about faith. I'm not fired up about myself. It's just a really hard time. Just like when she was falling, when she was in track. But I promise you, there's going to be a day when something just happens and you just can latch on to the fact that it's like you're taken care of. God has a vision for all of us. And just like the father, he was there the whole time and supporting her. And even after he was gone physically, she discovered all the boxes of, of shoes that she, he had made ready for her. Even after he was gone, he was able to still provide help for her dreams and be there for her. And just like that, God is here for our dreams. And let that be your energizer. Let that be the thing that fires you up. Let that be the thing that makes you say, God, you've been here for me the whole time. Guys, let's be fired up about that. Let's do exactly what she did and achieve our wildest dreams. We can do it. I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. And, and on that same note, we have one worship song. And it's the throwback classic. It, it's something we all did when we were kids. Or, or maybe if you haven't before, that's okay. It's really easy to catch on. And I want you to just go back to that moment when you were fired up about it. And just do this with us. So, with that, here's the last song. Bye, guys. See you next week. Stepped on the rock, the rock was solid The love of God came tumbling down The reason I know he touched my soul I dug down deeper and found me a gold uh -huh. King Jesus is Lord King Jesus is Lord He's the Lord of all He's the Lord of all Walking side by side Walking side by side You're never alone You're never alone And I know we will answer 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 Be when I call Stepped on the rock, the rock was solid The love of God came tumbling down The reason I know, he touched my soul I dug down deeper and found me a gold uh -huh. King Jesus is Lord, King Jesus is Lord. He's, the Lord of all. He's the Lord of all Walking side by side, Walking side by side. You're, never alone. You're never alone And I know he will answer 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 Me when I call Rock was solid, love of God came tumbling down. The reason I know He touched my soul, I dug down deeper and found me a gold. Uh -huh. King Jesus is Lord, King Jesus is Lord, He's the Lord of all, He's the Lord of all. Walking side by side, walking side by side. You're never alone, You're never alone. And I know He will answer, 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 and I know he will answer. And I know he will answer. me when I call. Me Rock was solid, the love of God came tumbling down. The reason I know He touched my soul, I dug down deeper and found me a gold. Uh -huh. King Jesus is Lord, King Jesus is 
Lord. He's the Lord of all. He's the Lord of all. Walking side by side. Walking side by side. You're never alone. You're never alone. And I know He will answer. 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 And I know He will. was solid, the love of God came tumbling down. The reason I know he touched my soul, I dug down deeper and found me a goal. Uh -huh. King Jesus is Lord. Lord, he's the Lord of all. He's the Lord of all. 